Hello, welcome to Back to Coding. Before checking this video, I highly recommend you to check the complete playlist in the description below. Today we'll be talking about activity life cycle. The states of an activity from birth to death. When Android creates and destroys an activity, the activity moves from being launched to running to being destroyed. The main state of an activity is when it's running or active. An activity is running when it's in the foreground of the screen, has the focus and user can interact with it. The activity spends most of its life in this state. An activity starts running after it has been launched and at the end of its life, the activity is destroyed. When an activity moves from being launched to being destroyed, it triggers key activity lifecycle methods, the on create and on destroy methods. These are lifecycle methods that your activity inherits and which you can override if necessary. The onCreate method gets called immediately after your activity is launched. This method is where you do all your normal activity setup such as calling set content view. You should always override this method. If you don't override it, you won't be able to tell Android what layout your activity should use. The onDestroy method is final call you get before the activity is destroyed. There are a number of situations in which an activity can get destroyed. For example, if it's been told to finish, if the activity is being recreated due to a change in device configuration, or if Android has decided to destroy the activity in order to save space. Let's take a closer look at how these methods fit into the activity states. The activity life cycle from create to destroy. Here's an overview of the activity life cycle from birth to death. First, the activity gets launched. The activity object is created and its constructor is run. Second, the onCreate method runs immediately after the activity is launched. The onCreate method is where any initialization code should go, as this method always gets called after the activity is launched and before it starts running. Third, an activity is running when it's visible in the foreground and the user can interact with it. This is where an activity spends most of its life. Fourth, the onDestroy method runs immediately before the activity is destroyed. The onDestroy method enables you to perform any final cleanup such as freeing up resources. Fifth, after the onDestroy method has run, the activity is destroyed. The activity ceases to exist. So far, we have looked at the create and destroy parts of the activity lifecycle. But there are other events in the activity's life that you might want to deal with to get the app to behave in the way you want. As an example, suppose your app is running and you get a phone call. Even though the app isn't visible, it will continue running. But what if you want the app to stop while it's hidden and resume once the app is visible again? Fortunately, it's easy to handle actions that relate to an activity's visibility if you use the right lifecycle methods. In addition to the onCreate and onDestroy methods, which deal with the overall lifecycle of an activity, there are other lifecycle methods that deal with an activity's visibility. There are three key lifecycle methods that deal with when an activity becomes visible or invisible to the user. These methods are onStart, onStop, and onRestart. Just as with onCreate and onDestroy, your activity inherits them from the Android activity class. OnStart gets called when your activity becomes visible to the user. OnStop gets called when your activity has stopped being visible to the user. This might be because it's completely hidden by another activity that's appeared on top of it or because the activity is going to be destroyed. If onStop is called because the activity is going to be destroyed, onSave instance state gets called before onStop. OnRestart gets called after your activity has been made invisible before it gets made visible again. Let's take a closer look at how this fit in with the onCreate and onDestroy methods. The activity lifecycle, the visible lifetime. The activity gets launched and the onCreate method runs. Any activity initialization code in the onCreate method runs. At this point, the activity isn't yet visible, 
as no call to on start has been made. The on start method runs after the on create method. It gets called when the activity is about to become visible. After the on start method has run, the user can see the activity on the screen. The on stop method runs when the activity stops being visible to the user. After the on stop method has run, the activity is no longer visible. If the activity becomes visible to the user again, the on restart method gets called followed by on start. The activity may go through this cycle many times if the activity repeatedly becomes invisible and visible again. Finally, the activity is destroyed. The on stop method will usually get called before on destroy, but it may get bypassed if the device is extremely low on memory. What if an app is only partially visible? So far we have seen what happens when an activity gets created and destroyed and we have also seen what happens when an activity becomes visible and when it becomes invisible but there's one more situation we need to consider when an activity is visible but doesn't have the focus when an activity is visible but doesn't have the focus the activity is paused this can happen if another activity appears on top of your activity that isn't full size or that's transparent the activity on top has the focus but the one underneath is still visible and is therefore paused there are two life cycle methods that deal with when the activity is paused and when it becomes active again on pause and on resume on pause gets called when your activity is visible but another activity has the focus on resume is called immediately before your activity is about to start interacting with the user if you need your app to react in some way when your activity is paused you need to implement these methods Let's see how these methods fit in with the rest of the life cycle methods you have seen so far. The activity life cycle, the foreground lifetime. The activity gets launched and the on create and on start methods run. At this point, the activity is visible but it doesn't have the focus. The on resume method runs after the on start method. It gets called when the activity is about to move into the foreground. After the on resume method has run, the activity has the focus and the user can interact with it. The on pause method runs when the activity stops being in the foreground. After the on pause method has run, the activity is still visible but doesn't have the focus. If the activity moves into the foreground again, the on resume method gets called. The activity may go through this cycle many times if the activity repeatedly loses and regains the focus. If the activity stops being visible to the user, the on stop method gets called. After the on stop method has run, the activity is no longer visible. If the activity becomes visible to the user again, the on restart method gets called, followed by on start and on resume. The activity may go through this cycle many times. Finally, the activity is destroyed. As the activity moves from running to destroyed, the on pause method gets called before the activity is destroyed. The on stop method usually gets called too. Life cycle methods summary. On create. When the activity is first created, use it for normal static setup such as creating views. It also gives you a bundle giving the previously saved state of the activity. On restart. When your activity has been stopped just before it gets started again. On start. When your activity is becoming visible, it's followed by on resume if the activity comes into the foreground or on stop if the activity is made invisible. On resume. When your activity is in the foreground. On pause. When your activity is no longer in the foreground because another activity is resuming. The next activity isn't resumed until this method finishes, so any code in this method needs to be quick. It's followed by on resume if the activity returns to the foreground or on stop if it becomes invisible. On stop. When the activity is no longer visible, this can be because another activity is covering it or because the activity is being destroyed. It's followed by on restart if the activity becomes visible again or on destroy if the activity is going to be destroyed. on destroy when your activity is about to be destroyed or because the activity is finishing thank you for watching this video please do like share and comment on this video which really motivates me to make such useful content for you
Also, don't forget to check my other videos which can be helpful to you. And finally, subscribe to my channel.